Linux is awesome. But it doesn't matter how awesome I think Linux is if I couldn't get work done on it. And for many years, the biggest problem Linux had was that it didn't have applications. And while it was cool and it was neat technology and it had all this stuff in it, it was really hard to actually be productive on it because there weren't a lot of applications that you could actually use. That's no longer a problem. It's not an issue at all, whether it's productivity apps, it's creati creativity apps, it's gaming, whatever. Linux has all the games and apps and stuff that you could ever want. Now that that problem has been solved and we have all these applications and stuff, the question becomes, how do you be productive on Linux? How can you get more productive on Linux? So today I'm going to be taking you through five ways you can be more productive on your Linux system. Let's go ahead and jump in. The first way you can be more productive on Linux is to learn the command line. The command line can be very scary for a lot of new users. And beyond that, there seems to be the idea that using the terminal, aka the command line, is somehow antiquated. Like you're expected to do things like you would have done in MS-DOS back in the day. But neither of those things is really true. The command line is your friend on Linux. Transferring and moving files around between directories is so much easier in the command line. Connecting to remote computers using Git, uh, taking notes and coding are all much easier and more efficient in the terminal. For example, let's just take a small, simple example. If you want to move every PNG file out of one folder and into another folder, in a traditional file manager like you do in Windows or Mac, you'd have to go through and sort by that file extension, then select them all, and then open up another instance or tab of that uh, Finder or Windows Explorer, and then drag and drop those files. You might miss some. It's not necessarily the most efficient way of doing it. With a terminal command, it's as simple as one thing. So let's go ahead and show you this. So let's go into my pictures folder and then let's just say walls. It doesn't matter. I have all these things and let's just say I wanted to move everything that had a .jpg file extension to a new directory. So let's just make a directory called JP jpegs. And we'll do that and then I can go through and do cmv for move star dot jpg and then we're going to move that into the folder jpegs and i'm not going to actually do this because i don't want to actually have to undo it but just doing that command would move every single one of those jpeg files to the new folder that's all you'd have to do and that's why the command line is so powerful and that's just one example it's not even close to the only command line that can make your life easier you can append text to a text file using cat so let's just say i wanted i have a text file named text. So t so I'm going to create a text file called text.txt. Okay, and let's just say I wanted to say uh, put in the word the phrase hello world to the end of that thing. Now, I could open up that in vim and put the text that I want in that file very easily. But let's just say I wanted to do that right from the the command line. I could do that by doing echo hello world and then just put that in text.txt. Now if we vim into text.txt, hello world is here. Now you could also, so let's just say you had a um, another text file. Let's, um, let's create another one called text2.txt. And I could go through and do this. I could do cat text.txt into text2.txt and now oh that's because I spelled that wrong <laughs> I was like why didn't it work there we go now it worked <laughs> Spell that's one thing you'll learn in Linux and in everyday life spelling is the most important thing you could possibly learn and if you fail to do so when you're like in elementary school you're ruined for the rest of your life <laughs> Okay. But anyways, now if we vim into text.text2.txt, we'll see this also has our hello world in there. So those are things that you are really very powerful. And obviously this is just a very simplistic example, 
but it's something that you could do. And it's very cool because let's just say you're moving, you've just distro hopped and you want to go through and set up your bash dot, your bash RC file. And you want to keep the standard bash RC file, but you have a whole bunch of aliases that you have to have. If you have all of your aliases in a text file, you could go through and cat that alias.txt into the end of your brand new bashrc file, and then your bashrc file is all ready to go. Other things you can do is search through your documents and pictures using commands called find and locate. You can install and uninstall programs much easier in the terminal than you can ever do in a, G, in a GUI. And there's just so much more. Uh, I'm a big command line nerd, and I'm not even the biggest one out there. Uh, there's just so much you can do, and I think that it's one of the main things you can do to be more productive on Linux. So moving on to number two. Number two is use workspaces. This is one area that I was really bad at before I started using tiling window managers. When I was a KDE user, I just had all my windows piled on my two monitors, and I never used the workspace ever. They existed, but... Uh, you know, I just didn't use them. But you don't have to use a tiling window manager or a window manager at all to utilize workspaces. Every single desktop environment that I know of has workspace functionality. So first, the question is, what is a workspace? So if you're taking a look at the screen here, we're on workspace number five. Now, technically, this is DWM. They call them tags, and there's a reason for that. You can look that up if you're interested. But the basic functionality is the same. So I'm on work workspace five, tag five. If I move to 6, you can see I have Audacity here. If I move to 7, I'm on a blank workspace. And basically what this allows me to do is have different applications and stuff assigned to different workspaces so that I always know where things are. So basically what this means is you have 10 workspaces. Most of the time, 10 is the default. In desktop environments, you might have 4. In window managers, usually it's 9 or 10. Uh, that means you have 10 desktops, and each one of them can have different apps, windows, and so on opened on them, and then you can just switch between them like so. Very easy. I ran a poll a while back asking how many pe how many workspaces people use, and over 70% answered that they use between 2 to 10 workspaces every single day. And I think that's about normal. But I think that changes as you get into Linux more. When you're a new Linux user or even a new computer user, chances are you either don't know this functionality exists or you don't just don't use it. So I think that this is something that can change a, the way a lot of people use their computers because it allows you to be more organized in your work. It also allows you to segment your work. You can put your browser on one workspace and then try to ignore it as much as possible. That will try to keep you away from the cat videos on YouTube. But really, the key point here is organization, because if you're on a desktop environment and it's all all your windows are floating all way all around and stuff, and you have them piled on top of each other, it can oftentimes be very hard to find the things that you want to actually use, and that you become a professional at using Alt Tab. If every type of app has its own workspace, in in this case, like especially if you're using a tiling window manager, uh, you'll be able to feel more organized, and that makes you more app to find that the program that you're looking for and that causes you to be more productive you're not constantly searching for the app like oh my goodness where did i find that one where's that where did i put that one app oh my goodness it's gone or uh you know i accidentally closed it or you know i keep alt tabbing through stuff and keep missing the tab because i've gone too far you know if it, use workspaces it'll make you more organized number three is more of a general tip than productivity, but I do feel that this is very important. Find your perfect desktop environment or window manager. When you first start using Linux, feel free to hop between desktop environments and window managers as much as you want. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, contrary to what a lot of people on YouTube think. Use everything you possibly can because what you're doing is searching for the one that's perfect for you or the one that you can at least customize to be perfect to you. Part of being productive, no matter what operating system or distro or distro that you're using, is being comfortable in your working environment. If that isn't the case, it can cause distraction, pain, and dissatisfaction. One of the great things about Linux is that there are so many options when it comes to desktop environments and window managers. 
and you can use them all. It doesn't matter what distribution you're on, chances are you can go through and just install whatever desktop environment or window manager that you like. That means if one suits your workflow better than any of the others, you can easily make that change. So find which desktop environment window manager works best for you because that comfort that you get from being satisfied with your environment will make you more productive in the end. It also will keep you from having to tweak things over and over again. So one of the problems I have with productivity is I like to rice things and there's nothing wrong with it, but it oftentimes uh, t takes up a lot of time that is not necessary. And what I've found is that once I've found my perfect desktop environment or window manager, in this case, I'm using DWM, I tend to rice it less when I'm happy with the way the window manager works. So uh, find one that you can customize and then be happy with instead of having to change it all the time and having to tweak things, you know, all the time because that stuff can really become time consuming. The next one is learn key bindings. Now, this is not one that will apply to everyone because not everyone can be productive with a keyboard centric workflow. It's also one that will take a lot of time for you to develop because key bindings take muscle memory. Uh, You've been trained probably since a very young age, at least if you're between 30 and 40 or younger, you know, you've been trained for a long time to use a mouse and a keyboard. You've been trained to use them both. You use your mouse as a pointing you know, device and your keyboard as text entry. So that muscle memory is very hard coded in your brain. So using just a keyboard centric workflow will take some time. So this is not for everybody. Key bindings are available in almost every application imaginable, and they are also included in most every desktop environment window manager. And they're almost always customizable in some way, so you can go through and create them, uh, change, or you can go through and change them as much as you want to suit your needs. The reason why these can be so good is that if you end up typing a lot for your work or school, and you manage to use as many key bindings as possible, then your hands never leave the keyboard. This is helpful in that it saves time, but it also helps prevent wrist strain from moving back and forth between your mouse and your keyboard. You'll be surprised at how much quicker your workflow becomes when you don't have to switch between the two different input devices. Applications like Firefox and Chrome have extensions that you can download to enable more key bindings. Things like Vim Vixen or uh, Vim... There's another Vim one that I can't remember what the name is. This is great if you know and use Vim a lot since it brings the Vim bindings to the browser. And there are a lot of different extensions for different applications that do the same thing. And finally, organize your files and don't bloat your system. So this is one that is a little out there because it's, it doesn't always necessarily translate to more productivity. And it's hard to do, especially if you've been using your computer for a long time. The longer you use your computer, the more stuff you'll accumulate on it. Files, images, text documents, and so on all manage to be put all over the place unless you're very careful in your organization. If you can, make sure everything has its place. You'll be so much more productive if you know exactly where the thing you're looking for resides. It also helps that if you can't find something, as long as you know the general area of it, you can actually use things like find and locate in the terminal to find those things more quickly if you're just searching a directory than if you're searching your entire file system. Apps are another area that can sometimes cause you problems, especially startup apps. Programs that start up with your computer can often slow your computer down significantly, and that can cost you productivity. So make sure you eliminate things on your system that you don't need running. And it also bears to mention that the more applications you have, the harder it is to remember that you have them installed. And while that necessarily wouldn't cause you to lose productivity, it may force you to have to always sift through th hundreds of applications to find the one that you want. So uh, if you're not going to use something, uninstall it. That will make you at least a little bit more productive. It will save you a little bit of time. So those are five ways you can be more productive in Linux. Now, I think those probably also apply to things like Mac OS and, and Windows. But specifically for Linux... The command line, I think, is probably the biggest one. If you want to be productive on Linux and you want to be more efficient on Linux, use the command line as much as possible. Now, like I said, this is not something that everybody can do. A lot of people are very trained to use GUIs all the time. 
And I feel sorry for those people because, the, you know, while you can be very, you can be productive and efficient in a GUI, it always has felt to me that it's just so much better in the, the command line. So I, I implore you to give it a try, learn as much about it as you can. And e while you may waste a little time if you choose to go back to just to using GUIs, I think you'll be happy if you use command line as much as possible. Uh, so... Thanks for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Top tier supporters will be getting early access to some of my videos again starting next week. Real life has been absolutely bonkers lately, so uh, early access has not been something that I've been able to focus on this last couple weeks, but it, it's coming back. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.